Probably one of the worst animals to have make it into a natural area in this, in this region. The Burmese python uh, negatively impacted the Everglades. So these pythons have been released into this habitat, mm -hmm. unintentionally of course, and without knowledge of the consequences, and they proliferate. We've seen entire deer inside a snake. Right. We've seen a struggle between a large alligator and a large snake. All of a sudden you have this apex predator out in, in, in your system threatening your native species. So it's a big problem. And they're incredibly difficult to detect. I mean, they can hide in not very much cover at all. That's 100,000 animals spread over 3 million acres, plus some other undeveloped land, you know, agricultural land. Are there 100,000? Probably not. There's probably less than that, but we, we, just, we just don't know. My name's Jeffrey Fobb. I'm a captain with Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. Uh, my interest with snakes began when I was very, very young, and these are animals that people didn't like, and I kind of wondered why, because my mother's afraid I don't, but I'm not. Come on, buddy. All right, he'll come down. He's got very little choice. Um, I work with Florida Fish and Wildlife and the Nature Conservancy teaching the Python Patrol. You can see why it's difficult to catch them. Yeah. They, they'll get into cover like this and disappear. We just won't, we won't see them. No, he wants to find a hole like that. Come here, buddy. But he, he had him headed straight for it. He felt that cold air coming out of there. The Python Patrol program is a training program. One of the things that we do is we train natural resource workers or people who are outdoors a lot. It was a big challenge starting to work on this Python Patrol project because I'm a bird biologist by training. I'm not a snake person. Captain Fobb uh, trained me in a personal training. And uh, Jeffrey Fobb brought a bunch of snakes out, turned them loose in the grass, and everybody had to catch two. I'm going to pin his head. And that's when you get So you want to feel what it feels like? Oh, hey, let go, let go, let go. You know, I'm not really a thrill seeker, so I try to do it as methodically as I can and just looking at the way they're behaving. But there's a few spots on him that where you can see just the light shines on him and it's different than the background. Yeah. It's like, where's Waldo? Where are these little shiny bits? So at the periphery of where we know these animals are, uh, we have people who can identify and remove them. We do get calls about pythons that our staff can't always respond to. And that's when we call on our python patrol responders to go out to those calls. Over the last 20 years, we have seen an average decline of 98% in our small mammal population. 98%, that's almost all gone. In the case of rabbits and foxes, 100%. No one's seen a rabbit or a fox in the park for over two years. And we suspect the python is the main cause of that decline. I've been working at Shark Valley Tram Tours for uh, three years, roughly. I've caught four in the wild. Uh, first one was about a seven-footer. Three more at Shark Valley while I was working. Let's just let it get a little tired. People think that you can run them over. They survive a lot of those traffic strikes. Shooting them, if you have to destroy their head to kill them. They're, they're, these animals are tough. You know, we, we try to approach it ethically, as ethically as possible, but there's a lot of uncomfortable questions about are we capturing them humanely if they're just going to be euthanized in the end? And I think we can just say that we don't want to contribute to the suffering of an animal just because it's ultimately going to be, you know, destroyed. And, and but I mean, what's, what's the alternative? Do we have any realistic alternatives? People ask, well, why don't you just go out and hunt them down where the kind of terrain is inaccessible? We can look all the live long day, and we still are not going to be able to see them all. I don't want to give up and say that there's no hope of eradicating them. Uh, we're unsure what's going to happen. Once they, perhaps they eat everything here, they may move on. We need to do what we can to work at removing Burmese pythons, and I don't think we're ever going to completely eliminate them, but manage a population. And that's why the Python Patrol is in place. So far, nothing is, we're not giving up, but so far, nothing is uh, proven effective.